This is Pauline epistle written by Paul. Our message will be in Timothy. That's going to be Paul's little guy that he's training to be a pastor and a preacher. It's called pastoral epistles, if you don't already know that. It's the simple things that mess us up most of the time in the Word of God. It's not the deeper things. Just like arguing over gap theory and these different kinds. I told a guy I ain't arguing. You know, it's, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? How you doing as a Christian? How you living as a Christian? How you being a husband? How you being just a brother? How you being, you know, what's the deal? How about all that stuff? That extracurricular stuff, that's to keep you from thinking so much about sin because you're studying the Word of God and you're going with the deeper things. But as far as you being a, a, a Christian, man, there's a whole lot of other stuff we got to be working on. But look at uh, verse uh, uh, 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a what? Perfect man until the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. <clears throat> I look at that and I say, you know what? When I get up there with Jesus, and I'm up there with him, I won't have no prophets or apostles or teachers or pastors. That ain't for up there. You all know that, don't you? You're not that stupid, are you? No, but while you're down here in the, in the flesh, this is what you got to deal with. If you don't like that, take it up with God. Amen? That's just the way it is. Amen? And uh, so many people get hung up on position. And you're standing in Christ, and they try to cop out to the position whenever they have some, something put on them for the standing. Ridiculous. When I'm up there, I'm perfect. I don't need all the other stuff. All the other stuff are down here. Right? To perfect me. Yeah. Yeah. Make me a better person. Amen and amen. Now, let's preach a little bit. Glory to God. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And uh, we will uh, read some of these uh, illustrations here first. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your mercy, your grace. We thank you for all that you've done for us and our doing for us down here. Father, we don't ever want to forget about our position. What a blessed, blessed thought to know that we are assurance. We have a, we're just a shoe in up there. Join heirs with Jesus Christ. What a blessing that's going to be. That's our hope. Can't wait to get there, Father. But down here, we need all the help we can get. Holy Spirit, we pray that you lead and direct and teach. In Jesus' name, amen. Josiah a Wedgwood, a maker of a famous Wedgwood uh, pottery, one day showed a nobleman uh, through, through the factory, and a boy who was an employee of the factory accompanied them. The nobleman was profane and vulgar. At first the boy was shocked by the nobleman's irreverence. Then he became fascinated by his coarse jokes and laughed heartily. Mr. Wedgwood was distressed. At the conclusion of the tour, he showed the nobleman a vase of unique design. The man was charmed with its exquisite shape and rare beauty. As he reached for it, Mr. Wedgwood hmm, designedly let it fall on the floor, and the nobleman uttered an angry oath. I wanted that vase for my collection, he said, and you have ruined it by your carelessness. Mr. Wedgwood answered, Sir, there are other ruined things more precious than a vase, howsoever valuable, which can never be restored. You can never give back to the boy who has just left us the reverence for sacred things which his parents have tried to teach him for years. You have undone their labor in less than a half an hour. Wow. James Haldane. When a young man commanded uh, 
the man of war, entitled uh, Melvin Castle, that was the name of this ship. In a fierce battle with an enemy ship, he ordered uh, new men on deck to take the place of those who had been killed or wounded. The men, seeing the mangled, bloody bodies of their comrades, fell back in horror. Captain Haldane began to swear frightfully and wished them all in hell. At the close of the fight, a Christian soldier stepped up and said respectfully to the young captain, Sir, if God had answered your prayer just now, where should we have been? This faithful word of rebuke went home to the conscience of Haldane. It led to his sound conversion. He abandoned his career in the Navy and became a preacher of the gospel and labored for 54 years. But this was not all. James led his brother Robert to Christ, who also became a preacher and able commentator of the Bible. Nor was this all. Robert Haldane was the means of the conversion of Felix Neff, a philanthropic, philanthropic a Swiss preacher and leader of Protestantism. Uh, what if that Christian soldier had remained silent instead of rebuking Captain Haldane? So think about it. How about this one? General Washington's directive. General Washington had this notice posted for his men in 1776. The general is sorry to be informed that the foolish, wicked practice of profane cursing and swearing, a vice heretofore little known in the American army, is growing in fashion. He hopes the officers will, by example as well as by influence, endeavor to check it. We can have little hope of the blessing of heaven in our arms if uh, we insult it by our impiety and folly. Added to this, it is a vice so mean and low, without any temptation, that every man of sense and character detests and despises it. Preacher, why are you reading this stuff? Because somehow those guys were kept character back then. Man. How about this? This is sort of neat. The story of two parrots. The story is told of two parrots who lived near each other. One was accustomed to sing hymns, while the other was addicted to swearing. The owner of the latter obtained permission for it to associate with the former, in the hope that its bad habit would be corrected. But the opposite happened. Both learned to swear. Wow. Are we have fun now? A farmer drove his team of mules into town and was very late returning home. What took you so long, asked his wife. Well, the farmer explained, on the way I had to pick up the preacher. And from there on, these mules of ours didn't understand one word I said. Second Timothy three two. Second Timothy three two. Second Timothy three two says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. A blasphemer, one who blasphemes, one who speaks of God in impious and irreverent terms. Also mentioned in 1 Timothy 1, means any speech directly dishonoring God. Profaneness, irreverence of sacred things, particularly the use of language, which implies irreverence towards God, the taking of God's name in vain. Profaneness in men is vulgar and odious. In females is shocking and detestable. Learn hence that sins, especially great sins, Seldom go single and alone, but commonly generate and beget one another. Thus here you have self-love, the beginning of the verse, begets covetousness, covetousness, pride, and pride blasphemy. Thus men fall from one sin to another and proceed from one degree of wickedness to another. The title of the message is, Men Shall Be Blasphemers. Words are powerful and words come from the heart and have a spirit attached to them. This is nothing new or spooky. 
but a fact. Have you ever heard, he cut me to the bone? <laughs> I have. There are times of romantic words that stimulate the inside and, and a drill sergeant that can cause a person to pass out. The devil used enticing words on Eve, smooth, comforting, and stimulating words to get her to agree with him. And words have been ruining young girls ever since. Blasphemes, profaneness, is irreverence towards God and should not be named among his children. Those that have this problem have erred from the faith and no longer have a good conscience toward God. Now, let us read verses 1 through five to get the gist of this time of moral corruption of body, soul, and spirit. The Bible says, 2 Timothy chapter three, one through five, thus know also, in other words, there's some more you need to know. If you read the, first, the, next, the, the previous chapter, you'll find out. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. What is that, preacher? Well, that's like sovereignty of self. That's all about you. Look at verse 3. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. What is that, preacher? That's sick servant of Satan. That's what that is. It's almost funny, isn't it? But it's not. Then verse 4. Traitors. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. What's that preacher? Well, selfish. Selfish, sensual, slave. That's what that is. And then fifthly, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. That's satanic, isn't it? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power of it? Hmm. And then lastly of that verse, it says, from such turn away. What does that mean? Separate yourself. That's what it means. Pretty simple, isn't it? I think so. So we go over these verses. Heard them preached all different ways, at least I have. They're more applicable to me today than they were 10 years ago. Or 20 years ago. Yet the same circumstances were going on during Paul's time. Really were. Does this sound convincingly like today? If you went through all those deals? Yes. This reads like the morning news starting with the government on down. Traitor, I mind, come on. The nations that forget God go to hell. You know that, right? The United States is going there because Christians were not being Christians for a few generations or more. Look around today at modern Christianity and their cry. Their cry against preaching on sin and its damnable outcome. They want liberty from preaching against their sins. What's wrong with Christian tattoos? Watching fornicating movies and listening to profanity because it makes the movie more real. How about smoking dough? I mean, that's better than pills and an occasional drink never hurt anybody. I mean, these actually require an answer from a born-again child of God. A child that's led by the Spirit of God and has the Word of God doesn't even have a problem understanding this stuff is wrong. Of course today it's different. <laughs> it's a different God. He changed his mind. And his grace allows the stuff now. No, sorry. We have become dirty and we moved away from the faith and need a spiritual revival from Almighty God. That's what we need. That's what we need. I say we, all of us. We get used to stuff. It doesn't bother us no more. 1 Timothy 1.18. Go to 1 Timothy 1.18. Preacher, why are you starting this off? Well, even if you weren't thinking that, I say I interject that to let you know how I'm starting it off. Because this is March. And March means, for Victory Baptist Church, media fast. That means try to stay away from the stuff you normally watch all the time. Watch some spiritual stuff. I think Brother Jeff and others have downloaded a bunch of preaching or DVD sermons and different things. There's a tremendous amount of stuff out there to watch. We, I have the Moody series. I'm thinking about maybe every Friday night. Maybe I'll just be here Friday night. 
and we'll watch two videos a, a night, and fellowship or whatever. But they're, 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 I think they're an hour each, these videos, and I'm telling you, it, it, they're just really neat. Tell you, you know, the universe, civilizations, all with the Christian perspective, God's word, and uh, what a blessing they are. And they're videos. We're going to try to get them set up with the, the uh, TV that we have. And, and I, if I'm the only one here, I'll be here. I'll just make a commitment because we used to do this stuff. If you can be here, fine. If not, once again, I will not preach into hell. But don't use that as an excuse, and you're going to go. Anyway, you and God's going to have to get that together. Amen. But I think the teens would love it. If I can ever get them put on DVD, they'd even be better. But that's where we are right now. And uh, so that's why I'm bringing this out, because I have lapsed in the last 10 years, um, and I know it. But it just get, you get used to doing stuff, and it's like, hey, you know? I mean, really, people, think about this. Churches are promoting tattoos. I know where my mind was at when I got them. And if I knew that God approved of that, because at that time I really didn't care what he approved about it. And the frame of mind I was in, who cares, you could have stuck me with anything. But when I got out of the club, it's like, now it's okay. Man, I've had maps all over my body. Hey, Amen. I, I know I got some good guys that put Jesus carrying the cross and stuff. And, Put the scriptures on my preacher. Don't judge. Okay. Is it an abomination to got to be a sodomite? Everybody know that man. You know, bedding down with man. Why would you say that? Well, preacher, God said that. Where did He say that? Old Testament. Did He say don't put any marks on your body? Was you born with them marks? And as a Christian, the temple of the Holy Ghost. You don't belong to yourself, you belong to him. And you put a PS after after your tattoo and say, praise Jesus? Well, I know a guy that got saved. Man, God will use a jackass to save somebody, stupid. Doesn't mean you're doing right. Didn't the prophet Balaam get a sermon from a jackass? That's Bible. You listen to worse stuff than that on TV, so shut your mouth. Think about that. Would you have did it 10 years ago? Would you even have thought it possible that people would sanction it? Churches would say it's okay. Well, they're saying sodomites getting married is okay now. They're saying, oh, but that's different. Oh, yeah, here we go. We're under grace, preacher, and we're... You know, and the tattoos really doesn't fall under. Oh, good night, man. Can you believe what's going on today? That devil did a great job. Number one, those people that talk like that do not have a final authority. Period. That's why we stress that King James Bible is the final authority. Absolute final authority. Period. People that go that route don't believe any of that. They're hung up on thoughts of what they think God said and what thinks what th they think what God would do and, and how God's grace is like this and God's grace allows us to sin and God's grace allows us to do whatever we want in our bodies because we have liberty. Praise God for God's grace. And every man does that which is right in his own eyes. Won't submit to authority, won't get under the preaching of the word of God. Birds of a feather flock together. Got problems, man. Boys don't know how to talk to girls. Girls don't know how to talk to boys. Girls are more manly than boys are. It's messed up, man. Sit back and watch an elderly lady get out of a car, start slipping and sliding. You got young men. Nobody rushes to help them. Sick in the head. Sensual. Self-will. Don't give a rip about anybody else. Don't even think before they talk or they act. That's on the devil. That's flesh. That's carnal. That's wrong. You need to be humble. You need to get it together. You need to understand other people come before you. That's Christianity.
First Timothy chapter one. Verse 18. Apostle Paul talking to Timothy. He's giving him a charge. He says, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good what? Warfare. Holding faith and a good what? Conscience. Which some, having put away concerning faith, have made what? Shipwreck. Of whom is Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto who? Who? That they may learn not to what? I pray we can all see the danger of an earthly testimony that cannot be distinguished between paganism and Christianity. Our spirit is infected by what we allow and what we claim to have God's approval of in our actions. Why won't we get something to block us from listening to profanity willfully? Or clean up the nakedness from the DVDs? God will protect us from the world when we work in it and have our being in it but when we willfully put ourselves under it or in it, we lose that protection. We become sponge that eventually is squeezed out in the public and our testimonies are ruined and people go to hell because of it. I watched uh, something that Mike Hagan, I think it's... Uh, I forgot what it's called, good DVDs or something. They do a good job to take all that junk out. And I heard there's other things that you can get. Uh, uh, these other things that you can, I guess, get where you're supposed to be able to be able to program what you're seeing, and it takes that stuff out. But it's not convenient to get this stuff. We are convenient people. I mean, can we see our need, Victory Baptist Church of Revival? Can we really see it? Revival comes to each and every individual that submits to the Lord and knows he needs it. And when God delivers it, that's when your excitement for souls starts to happen. There's just something that happens inside of you that gives you the desire to look at people when I'm saved. That's part of revival. Uh, there's something inside of you that provokes you to do right. It's just, it's like a revival. It's like a new breath. It's like all of a sudden the Holy Ghost is in there saying, do this, and you say, okay. Don't do this, okay. It's like there's like, it's really neat. It's like all of a sudden you got this peace again. Revival's not a one-shot deal, people. To maintain revival, you have to maintain submission to the Lord. You've got to believe what he says in the book. Stop questioning everything. Can we see our need of revival? Sinner, can you see your need of salvation? I mean, how are we using that liberty that God gave us? That's the deal. And whenever you study liberty in the Bible, it seems like nobody does. There's a lot that do. I'm looking at the word liberty. I'm going through that. And it, it, you know what I got liberty from? Bad conscience. I can serve God. He did some with my conscience. I can actually serve a living God. I have liberty to serve a living God. Not liberty to serve my flesh like I used to, but liberty to serve God. My goodness, the regulations and qualifications in the Old Testament, you never see that. Now, he purged our conscience from what? So God, it works. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us? Man, we, got, we can serve him. Feel just as good doing it. That's a blessing. That's revival. People with bad marriages, get them back together with revival. I mean, what a, people are called to cert, do certain things. When revival takes place. But never, never 
never has pride been an evident token of revival. Never have people ran around and said, oh, I'm revived. I got to get God did this. God did this for me, for me, for me, for me. No, no, no. When revival hits, you're humbled by it. Because you know God had to do that for you. I told church before, I said, this is in Corinthians, I told you, charity to me as a pastor that should be possibly reasonable work according to uh, Romans chapter 12 is hard. I don't know how anybody does it. God's got to work for me to do that chapter. There's no way I'm going to like somebody I don't like. No way I'm not going to try to pay somebody back that got me. Naturally speaking. The ugliest dude out there tattooed up with spikes and hair coming out. and Who knows what else is happening. For me to give that person a track? Thanks God, man. God's got to work on my heart. To get me to cry, God's got to squeeze my heart. Keep me serving him, God's got to do that. One day at a time, I trust God to allow me to do that. Or I ain't going nowhere. That's just how I am. Revival. I mean, I thought about this. What if God delivered us all at Victory Baptist Church onto Satan? You know, there's people that would hear me say that and laugh. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I'm serious. What did the Bible say about those two birds? Messing around with the resurrection other doctrine, them two. Wasn't there somebody hung around with Paul? Saw everything that Paul did, but loved this present world? Didn't the Corinthian church, didn't Paul say, deliver them on to Satan? What do you mean God can't take his hand off of us and let us go our way? And let Satan just beat the snot out of us till we appreciate what we got. What do you mean he can't do that? It's nothing to laugh about. Like I said Wednesday, if you laugh all the time, no reason, there's something wrong with you, you're a sick puppy. If you cry all the time, there's something wrong with you. There's a time and season for that stuff. So if you're one that laughs at everything, you got to slow down and say, God, help me, man. I'm a sick puppy. Right, i got to do that. Just ain't got sense. Somehow we just think we got too much, and we don't. Somehow we think we're just so right with God. Oh, you know. No, I don't know. Show me by your life how much God is to you. And stop making excuses. Because it's going to be longevity. It's going to be how long you stay with the Lord. How long he's, he's did these things that you could finally tell somebody how good the Lord is. Well, the Lord got me right. That's fantastic. Praise the Lord. You can tell somebody that. Now, has he kept you? Is he working on you daily? Your speech changing? Your walk changing? You know, that's what's in the Pauline epistles. There's lists all through that thing. Telling you what to add to your faith in Peter there. Whole list. We all fall short. What's lacking? Holy Ghost. Fullness of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Man. I'll tell you what, every time we put away our good conscience for a filthy one, that's dangerous. Men shall be blasphemers, the Bible says in perilous times in history. Is there any question in your mind of what time we're in right now? Examine yourself today and see if there's anything you would like to talk to God about. Are there things worn against your soul? Do these things have a grip on you? If you're already powerless against some form of addiction, why don't you get God involved? I mean, what's wrong with begging at an old-time altar? What's, what's wrong with pulling your car over and begging God or at night going on your bed and saying, Oh, God, I'm so full of myself. I'm sick of myself. Help me, God. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. You've got to examine yourself. Dangerous. I mean... 
You got to get serious at home. You got to read more. You got to pray more. You got to witness more and pass out tracts. Why? Because that's thinking of other people. We do not have the luxuries of the devil's kids in this devil's world and please God too. We just don't. We need to make a difference, Victory Baptists. I mean, I want the whole church to go out with a shout. I want us all to, when we see them, will not be ashamed. Will not be ashamed. And I don't know how you can do it, Victory, without him. Our speech betrays us. The country's going to hell. Our teenagers are growing up. We're accepting all sorts of things again. It just gets bad. You lose your self-discipline. Pretty soon you lose your self-respect. Pretty soon you will argue. Or you'll actually argue with other Christians over Hollywood stuff. I mean fisticuff. I mean break fellowship with other Christians. This, this is, we're living in nutty times. We really are. If you are powerless, if you can't stop things that you're doing, and you claim to be saved, that ought to drive you crazy. That ought to almost make you go to your knees and say, God, I need some help here. Amen. And expect God by faith to help you. And Lord, have mercy if that's all you think about is yourself all the time. People can just watch you and tell that. It's all about you. Remember, whether, whether, the, whether the girls are... <laughs> are so manly now or not. They're still the weaker vessel according to the word of God. They still are going to bear, bear children. You still treat them as, as sisters, as daughters. You respect them for who they are. I was talking to Brother Ed about years ago. You didn't hear no men. I mean men. I mean World War II, Vietnam also. A little kid come around when they're talking. Guess what? They cut the profanity immediately. They don't respect the ladies that are around them. Then naturally they go back into the shop where it's all men or whatever they're doing. They, they call that shop talk. But at least they have respect not to do that. They didn't say they were saved. But they have respect for the kid, for the lady. Well, where do we get all this other stuff? Hollywood's teaching everybody how to act. Not the Bible. Get mad, get angry, and sin not. Okay. That's a rough one for me, too. Not slip and some of those words come back up. That's rough for me. But you know what makes it so much easier? Watching movies that have it in it constantly, getting in my ears and me trying to say, it's no big God, it's no big God. That, that's not as bad as that word. And I'm trying to get all this together. But you know what's happening? It's stirring up what I got in there already. I caught myself a few times from this pulpit because I was so mad at something, the stuff that goes from Some of the brethren already say, well, you might as well just said this because it was evident. I know, I'm sorry. Pray for this preacher. But man, or slip and say something when I get mad and say, where did that come from? The Holy Spirit just like a neon sign. Do, 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 do. That's what it comes from. Oh, um, I knew that. Sorry. What do you do with that? How can you have revival? If everything's about you. <laughs> ah, you're not your own. Sorry. You keep wanting to be your own, but you've been bought with a price if you're saved. God said to glorify him in your body and your spirit. Not his spirit. Your spirit. That's what he says. Think about where you're at today and this month as we Try not to look at things and try to somehow get a hold of God. You know, wouldn't it be a blessing if we could just pray in money? I mean, have the confidence. I'm not talking about just for money's sake, but for what we need. For missionaries, things around here, just pray it in. Think about your life, how many times God has blessed you and protected you even though you didn't deserve it. Think about if you were keyed up with him, in fellowship with him, wanting to obey him as imperfect as you are, but your heart wanted to obey him, and want to do what he wanted you to do. Think about talking to him and how he would answer you. I'm telling you. Just like a father would answer their kids if they're in fellowship with them. A whole lot quicker. A whole lot quicker. 
Let's all stand.